Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over what I think about when I'm sketching and specifically I'm going to be talking about techniques you can employ both through anatomy, through bar fundamentals. It's going to be fight, exciting, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to be looking at a few master artists as well, Repin, Sargent, uh, Frazetta, it depends on how much time we have. But I'm going to be breaking down a few systems and how you should implement them into your work. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So when you look at the face, and this video is going to primarily be about the face, you want to look at a primary form that's created. And this is outlined in Bridgman's book, and I'll show a little photo on the right side so you can see what I'm referring to. But once you actually memorize this form, it makes constructing the head just so much easier from reference or from imagination if your vocation employs you to do so. But... Either way, knowing this basic form of the head really, really helps. So as you can see on the right hand side, Bridgman created this very simple abstraction of the face, almost like the first stage of blocking it out in clay. And if you can take that simplification and you can learn how to depict that from multiple different angles, it's really gonna make drawing from a reference a lot easier. Now, it might seem counterintuitive, but if you learn how to draw something without any help, any reference help at all, and you know it so well that you can just take it and put it down on paper without any sort of hints to go off of, then it's gonna really, really reinforce what you need to know, and it's gonna make your sketching a lot more quick and far more accurate. So learning this form is the primary thing that you should go about doing. So I'd suggest looking up Bridgman copying all of his head drawings and then really learning the forms of the face and it'll help you a lot. So like, for example, if I'm drawing this guy, not even from three quarters, but head on, I'm gonna be thinking about this primary sort of form. So I'm thinking about the general shape of his head, but when you look at where the, the eyebrows line up, you get this kind of line going down the forehead on this temporal lobe, right? And what that creates is the, the edge of the head. So the edge of the head actually turns over from the, from the corner of the eyebrow up across the forehead. And if you look at like a skull, you'll see that actually above the eye, there's this little like line here. And it meets up with the cheekbone to create this little the cheekbone area. But it goes like up across the eye and you can actually if you take your own head right now and you feel and you feel like a cross on top of your the corner of your eye you can feel this little line on your forehead where the head turns over and it's this little bump and if you can notate that bump right on the edge right here and you can notate that it helps you really place all the features a lot more correctly so if we think about that, even though you can't see it at all in this particular painting from Repin, then you can create the little sun visor thing as just a, a general form guide. And then this guy's nose is really long, so you wanna notate the proportions. And then thinking about that primary form, you can build out the sides of the face. And from the sides of the face, you can go from the ear, and this is more of a Riley rhythm. And one day maybe I'll make a video on that if you guys are interested in that. Leave a comment down below. But you go from the corner of the ear all the way to the edge of the chin, and it creates this side plane of the face. And that's notated here as well. And what it creates is this kind of simple corner where everything turns. Now you don't see it as much in this lighting, but in a lot of lightings, you'll see the face actually shaded like that. And that's created by this corner. But this corner is also helpful for plotting a lot of the anatomical details. So under here is gonna be that cheekbone. And although you don't directly see it, you could do some soft shading, especially if you're oil painting, uh, right around where that is. And it just makes it look a little more atomically accurate. Anatomically accurate. So next you can get in the beard and all that great stuff. And also the great thing about this form breakdown is that from the corner, from the top here where it meets in and you get that little slice, this is where the eye line is. So if you think about the eye line, it just cuts right through here where the end of that eyebrow leaves. And then you can create the socket of the eye, which would generally be like this as a skull. And if you think about the eyeball, 
you can just plot in the eye. A good exercise too is looking at a reference and then trying to construct the face from a different angle using the reference. That's always a good one. Cause that way you can still reference some of the proportions and stuff that you'll need, but it's gonna really test your ability to remember all of those forms from imagination. Now you don't have to get a likeness or something when you're completely changing up the angle, let's say from front to three quarter or something, but it is a really good exercise to prove to yourself if you know something or to allow yourself to understand if you don't. Now, another good thing to think about is that on the front of the forehead is this rhythm. It's this sort of, it's a circular rhythm. So it goes from, if you see the edge of the eye right here, there's this kind of circle and you're not gonna draw the circle, but you're gonna think about it in your head. And what the circle does is that it notes this little mass, this little form, particular form on the forehead. And what it essentially is if you draw like a, just a basic skull, what it is is this little mass at the top and it creates these two little like almost horns but they're not really, they're these little protrusions on the skull and it creates this rounded form. And I'm obviously exaggerating that no skull is gonna look like this, but for demonstration purposes, the actual light is curving over the form. It creates this really kind of weird shadow where you get this circular sort of rhythm. So even in this photo, you can see that the roundness of the forehead is really shown off. So his hairline would be kind of like this, like that, and then the roundness of this rhythm here perfectly corresponds to the actual shadow shape that you see on his head. And then you can just fill it in. And for this lighting too, it's gonna to be very simple, obviously. But without knowing that rhythm of the skull and actually knowing why it's changing plane, the, the shape actually follows that, it's gonna, you're gonna see the shape, but it's gonna be more difficult to place and to place it accurately is just gonna take more time than knowing why. So next, all the stuff is just kind of secondary. Building in the main structure of the face is really what matters. And then during the next stage, you see if you did it correctly. So this guy kind of just has the suggestion of an eyebrow. Interesting, but... And then you'll see this kind of furrow pattern. Comic book artists like Jim Lee like to exaggerate a little bit where you get this really thick furrow and it makes them look really angry, but usually on older guys, you have this little shape up here. You see it in the Henry James painting by Sargent. He has that same little shape. And then for the shadow value, I'm not trying to get every value correct. It's generally, I'm just trying to notate what shadow and what's light, right? And then I put more detail in the lights, less detail in the shadows. Very typical trick you'll see a lot of master artists do. So if you do enough studies, you'll pick up on those and start implementing yourself. So in placing the ear, it really helps to think about the ear as inside profile sort of. So if you look at this, for example, this skull here, the ear I know would go like right about here and then you'd have the, the chin right there. And the way that I know that is that if you split the face into thirds, you get, you get these three differences, right? So you get from chin to bottom of the nose. So if you actually filled out this guy's nose, then you go down there, right? But you get one third, two thirds, three thirds, and then the, here's where the hairline would be. You know, give him some hair or something. Very flat, <laughs> but it's all right. Uh, but in this middle third, you'll see the ear actually lines up perfectly. So from the bottom of the nose all the way back is the ear, the bottom. And then from the eyebrow line back is the top of the ear. And that might seem, you know, how am I supposed to translate that, that into a front view, you know? But it's actually, it's really useful to know from any sort of angle. So like if I have, let's say a face from this angle, right? And it's at a, it's not at a front angle and it's kind of three quarters, something like that, right? Then I can split up the face into thirds 
and then I can think of this face as a box. So if you just grab a little box here and you put the face into this box, then you can think about the fact that if you have the nose line and let's say the, the eyebrow line right here, you can extend that off the page. And then at the turn of the box, you can see the point where it turns over on this edge. And then you can run it back parallel with the bottom of that box. And what that does is that if you have the eyebrow line right here, so you have like, you know, a little face going on. Then you can run it back and you'll know that that ear is gonna be right back there, right? So using this sort of, this method actually helps you place the ear pretty well. So you can see that from here, the ears actually looks lower than the eyebrow, but the reason for that is that it's tilted uh, back a little bit. So when the head goes back and it rotates backwards, the ear is gonna look lower, which just makes sense, right? If you, if you did this and then you rotated the box, then the angle from the, the nose on the edge of the box would actually go down. So if you look at the angle from the nose to the ear, the angle is downward. And then if you go, you know, you can see that that sort of relationship here, just less extreme. So that's one really good thing to think about, which doesn't have a lot to do with shapes, it has more to do with construction, but it's very, very useful to know when you're trying to construct the face quickly. And once you actually get to know a lot of these anatomical things and anatomy uh, facts, it'll help you achieve a likeness a lot faster because you can get in all the average sort of proportions and then you can fix all your anatomy mistakes, which is really where a lot of likeness mistakes are. And then when, when you actually get into the into the like shape in the nose, how big it, the nose is, and you know all the particulars of somebody's face, rather than great deviations from the average, which would happen if you're just going off a of shape and you don't know your anatomy, then it's a lot easier to get a likeness because you can actually focus on what makes a person look the way they do rather than what makes a human look the way they do. So learning this stuff is very, very useful. But when you're thinking about the, the nose, and it's a little bit hard when um, I'm sketching this small, but if I just uh, expand it, you can think about the nose as these three main shapes. So you have the, the little pentagon here, or trapezoid or whatever. <laughs> and then you have this little shape, which extends outward like that. And then you have kind of a, now depending on the nose, right? You have either a ball, it's uh, more of a circle or you have more of an oval. And for people with like longer noses, longer and thinner, it tends to be more of an oval. So if you look at like this, this guy up here in the painting, his nose isn't round. It's a lot more ovular. So if I was trying to draw his nose, I would construct it a little bit more like this with these general three shapes. But then on top of this nose, you have the wings, right? And then that one would actually, you wouldn't see any of it. This entire side would go. And uh, another Riley rhythm would be here. And that's where the, the, the nose actually gets volume. So a lot of people, when they're sculpting the nose, make it really, really thin. So from the bottom view, instead of like a big fat triangle, which is what it actually looks like, where you have the, the nostrils, you know, and then the, the nose, so like from, from the bottom, if you're looking up, it would look more like that. Uh, but most people build the overall shape like kind of like that. So it's really flat and there's not a lot of area to breathe. So when you're drawing, keep in mind the volume and this rhythm right here. And usually on this, this shape that it creates, uh, creating all these shapes that are in the Riley abstraction, you usually have a little bit of a half tone on the side since you have that blank chain. But if you keep all, all of these shapes in mind when you're actually constructing the nose, you can just kind of uh, hint at them. And really quick, I'm gonna do this female face since we did so much about male uh, anatomy and stuff. And by the way, if you're doing these little forehead shapes, don't do that for females. It's gonna make it them generally look less attractive. So unless that's what you're going for. But anyway, so the female face, if you look at the difference between the male face and the female face, what I keep in mind is that all the forms are gonna be a lot rounder. So like, if you look at the front view, that's gonna be the general shape of a female versus the male, you're gonna have the, the cheekbones and then the, the actual bottom is gonna be a lot broader. 
So you see this little, this difference here, right? So the bottom and the chin, you see, pointy, and then you flat. And what that does is that it creates this wider jaw and it feels more masculine. So if you look at the actual shadow shapes, if we turn this from a shape into a form, bam, these are the kind of shadow shapes you'd see. So you can see this one feels a lot more masculine, that one feels a lot more feminine. So if I'm sketching this, this female right here, this painting, you still think about that.